Hey, what's going on, everyone? Sly here with D. D, man. I'm rocking the new shirt, baby. <laughs> Let's go. The one that Brock Purdy was wearing for the championship. Let's go. But uh, my boy, your boy, Sean Salisbury, had some words to say about the media, all the hate on Purdy, and how he shut him up. Let's check this out. So what do you think they're going to say about Brock Purdy? Somehow, some way, the national narrative is going to shift it some way today yep. that it wasn't about Purdy. Did you see McCaffrey? Oh, what a play by Debo Samuel. All, all those things. Yet the guy who steps out, does a, a, a full 360 twirl, and makes a throw going to his left, if that was Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, people would be putting him in the Hall of Fame and worshiping it. Oh, but he makes all the... He, it's just he throws the ordinary play. Well, I saw a couple throws that were... Monster throws to his left when it's third. Remember on the early in the game, third down drops back, puts his foot in the ground, hits an out cut after throwing an incompletion. Yeah, to IU. So you're going to hear the yeah. narrative like that because they it, p people that don't watch it correctly and everybody's entitled to opinion, but don't understand that part of it. Realize that the two teams that are in the Super Bowl, who was the most efficient? You know, you brought up earlier when, when we were on commercial break what some of the national media was going to say about Brock Purdy. I don't even want to hear it. Well, Ryan Clark actually had some positivity about him. He That's said he's not going to have any hate, any anything negative to say about Brock Purdy. He said Brock Purdy put the team on his back and they won. How do you do that if you're just a, if you're if you're a guy that you're not any? I mean, he's been doing it for two years. Game manager. Interesting. Hmm, okay. <laughs> hey, another thing. Shift uh, that narrative in a hurry. Huh? It's pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah. I wonder if all the rest of the national narrative guys jump in and give us. A, yeah, but if he didn't have McCaffrey, if he didn't have, of course, yeah, and if. If Mahomes didn't have Kelsey, if if Kelsey didn't have Mahomes, if Andy Reid didn't have Mahomes, I mean, it exists on every team, and uh, I can't wait to see it. Purdy's earned it. Two years, two NFC title games. Where's the credit going to come? It's uh, I can't, can't believe it. They've already started with the good narrative, not the yeah. nasty one. Yeah, surprising. Yeah, and it shifted pretty damn quick yep. uh, about Brock Purdy. I, I just I don't know. All right, man, that was kind of cool. The best part, what I thought, what he talked about was Ryan Clark. Oh, okay. One day, you know, changing your, your mind. Absolutely awesome, man, because he's someone that's been rolling with Purdy and he just hated all the BS talk that's been out there from all these haters, you know, local media and obviously the national media that had been hating on him. Uh, but what do you think about this, man? His takes on all this stuff? Oh, man. Uh, definitely, uh, agree with the way he was saying and the way he, he called out Ryan Clark, but he pretty much also meant, like, also, like, how you saying, like, all the analysts. Man, I woke up this morning with a big old smile on my face because I was like, man, I got to watch everybody. Everybody on ESPN, everybody on uh, FS1. I was like, I got to just see, like, here, what, what's the excuse now? Because we've been saying about it, man. Or Also, I've been saying it, like, since, like, if he doesn't win, like, he's got to win the Super Bowl because otherwise they're just going to, that's going to be the narrative, man. I heard even uh, Shannon Sharp was even saying, he's like, he's got to win it. He's got to win it. I don't believe in him yet. Mm -hmm. And all the other analysts, uh, they were just shutting up, man, after all that hate. Man, that was awesome to see you to wake up this morning. Just all of them changed their tune. Um, but I agree with that. He was saying that, man, like, it is crazy just, like, how this guy could play. He broke our franchise record. You know, he passed us, Steve Young and Joe Montana. Um I believe that since he's started and ended a football game with us in the playoffs, he has not lost. Um, he has one of the best records with us. What was it like around 21 and five or something like mm -hmm. that? Like crazy record. And man, he just been balling out. And all the analysts what were they saying, Oh man, I got to see him come back from behind. Well, we did it two games in a row, man. And I'm telling you, like, this is like what I was seeing in like the training camp. I was like, dude, like call me crazy. But this guy got a freaking ball. Like, this guy's a baller. Like, his arm strength is, like, just, per like, a beauty. Just, like, the way he just, like, it was, like, a gunslinging. Just the way he just snipers it compared to the rest of the quarterbacks I was watching. I was like, man, this guy's a third stringer. This guy should be the first stringer. And I'm not, like, surprised at the way he's been balling out. Like, this guy has been amazing the last two years. And it's crazy that he's 24 years old. And he's already taking us to the Super Bowl, man. And uh, the one, the last call out that... um that he was saying was Ryan Clark, man. That was a guy I was really like shocked because all year round, this guy was like, oh yeah, Brock Purdy's this, he's the guy. And then out of nowhere last week, he was like, man, I was just faking it. I was just faking it. And like, I just had to pretend they're like he was good. And then now today he's like, whoa, he's actually amazing. And I was like, what the hell, dude? I was like, oh my gosh, what a flip flopper, man. And it's one of those things where it's, um, 
he just believed in the narrative. He believed all this coworker just saying like all the bashing the Brock Purdy, and he just wanted to jump in the bandwagon because he was afraid that oh man, he didn't want to be the only one looking stupid. And then now look at him, man, just by him flip flopping, he just looks like a clown. And so it was awesome to wake up this morning to see all the analysts, just the way that they were just like oh changing their tunes. But Brock Purdy, man, um, the way the Tennessee Championship game, my dude. We didn't have the best first half, but the way he played that second half it was just amazing. Just the way that he was, we don't have the best offensive line. He was scrambling out, out of the pocket. He had those crazy passes to Juice. He got Ayuk involved, Kittle uh, passes. Dude, he was doing everything, man. And this guy, I'm so excited, man, Like for, that we're going to the Super Bowl with him. Like, I can't say enough about him. Yeah, man. Dude, honestly, this is why I don't get in the healer moment. Um, we were down against the Packers. I heard people bitching. We were down like, last last game, man. I was like, dude, it's 17 points. We've done it before. And just hearing people freak out on Twitter. That's why I'm like, dude, I'm not going to be in a prisoner moment. Grant Cohn a few weeks ago thought uh, Purdy was going to be benched. Will he be benched? That was a big article. Will he be benched for Sam Darnold? I was like, dude, that's why you can't do it one game at a time. I remember when we were used to, me, you guys, used, you, me, and Flo would always watch basketball. And I'd be like, dude, this guy's horrible, man. He's playing horrible. And then they make a shot, and you look at me. You guys look at me, and you're like, you see he made a shot. It's like, dude, it's not about one shot. It's about stacking up games. That's what it's mm-hmm. about, stacking up games. If you're able to do this over and over and be consistent the way Brock Purdy is, you know, come on, dude. The guy's a freaking stud. He ain't guys like, let me try to say, uh, who's the dude? Minshew. Minshew has a great game one game, and then he stinks it up the other game. That's how he is. That's how he rolls. So you're not going to be just because he has one great game. You're like, dude, this guy's amazing. Or if he has one bad game, oh, man, this guy, you know who he is, dude. He's a 500 quarterback. Brock Purdy, he ain't that, man. He's been a dude that's been consistent since he's got here, since his rookie year. Remember, he's only 24 years old, and people are acting like he's like a 30, he's 31 years old. He's a veteran, uh, 10 time Pro Bowler, some crap like that. No, man, this dude is a freaking, he's pretty much a rookie. He's his full, uh, first full year. So all this BS going off about him, you know, that's why Ryan Clark just doesn't make sense, dude. Last week you're bashing him, then this week you're not. It's like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? That's why every, whenever we talked today, I heard it and I was like, whatever, dude, I don't even care what you say because that's, you're so weird changing your mind, it, like, more than freaking change your underwear. It's like, dude, have one belief and stick with it. Don't be changing your mind. Two weeks ago, I like Purdy. Last week, I don't like Purdy. Uh, this week, I like Purdy. Who the hell are you? Are you freaking Grant Cohn? Like, what the hell is going on with that? <laughs> I don't get that shit. So, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. That's why you got to stick with the guy. You like what you see first, and then find out if you believe in him or not. Then stick with that, man. Don't be going back and forth. So, hearing that stuff, it's pretty much the national media. But I'm glad that the people that watched the film, from the Sean Salisbury, Greg Cosell, uh, J.T. O'Sullivan, all these studs that watch hours and hours and hours and hours of film... They say the exact same thing. Kurt Warner watches hours of film. Chase Daniels, hours of film. They're like, dude, this guy's a badass quarterback. I don't know what these guys are talking about. The guys that don't watch the film or that are on TV, um, they don't know shit. I got to give it respect to Acho. He does watch a lot of film. He even shows on his his time off. He's watching damn film, and he's he's said, "Oh, I, today he was giving him praise because he knows what's up. He watches the film. You know, someone like Joy Taylor, she's not a film man. She's out with." all of these guys in LA, you know, that's what she's doing on her spare time. So, and uh, one thing about that too, um, with all those, well, that, what it pissed me off is that like, like LaShawn McCoy and like joy, what they were saying was, um, and a lot of the narratives. So they were going, well, they were brought up the, the pick and then they brought oh, up yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. overthrow, so, uh, um, Ayuk. Well, that pick only got happened because, uh, I think it was Feliciano, right? He he got um, pushed back, and then oh, yeah. uh, Purdy's arm hit him, and then that's why the ball like mm-hmm. freaking ricocheted to like a pick. Our offensive line um, busted that play, so that was the only reason why he didn't like make a bad decision. It's just that the offensive line got pushed back and, and bumped into Purdy that were the pick. And same thing with the um, Ayuk overthrow. Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason it was an overthrow because of the pass interference. The yeah. rest threw the flag that we're gonna call a pass interference, and the only reason they didn't is because they were going to be at the goal line regardless. Mm-hmm. So they were like, oh, no play on the foul. He caught it. He's already at the goal line. But no one talks about that. It was yeah. going to be a pass interference. But when you look at, like, all the analysts, yeah. what they're saying is, um, oh, man, like, uh, he overthrew Ayuk. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you didn't overthrow him. Freaking the, what's it called? The the safety freaking blocked him from running his route. And that's why they threw the, the flag out. So that was the only reason and why. Here's the, thing, here's the thing. The funny thing is this morning, I was like, I wonder if these, the media is going to bash Lamar Jackson. 
Man, they freaking gave us oh, off. Oh man, it was the look at the coordinator. He was oh, and and I knew it. I knew it right away. If that was Brock Purdy that played that game yeah. exactly like Lamar, oh my gosh, it would be all over him. It would be crazy. But you know, the media has their narratives of who they who they're gonna pick and who's their golden child and who's not. Absolutely unbelievable. If that was Brock Purdy in that Ravens uniform, play that way that Lamar did with those turnovers, you would not hear the end of it. This dude's been in the league for six, seven years. Absolutely unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that right there. And Sean Salisbury, he said it so perfectly. He, that's what he said. And I was thinking the same exact thing. When I heard that, I was like, yep, 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 exactly, man, exactly. So there's definitely a little uh, bias going on right here where they have their favorites and, you know, someone like Purdy. One thing I did like, though, that he was saying about Purdy and just like, just the way that he just composed, the way that he just like the his presence in the pocket, just the way that he gets everybody involved. And that this guy's a winner. And he even talks about it. He's like, dude, name me a freaking team that doesn't have weapons. Exactly. You have like the Chiefs, uh, Mahomes. They have a good defense. They got Travis Kelsey. They have like one of like the best head coaches ever. And then you even go to like everybody who's in the um the the final four so you go with the lions man they have like a crazy offensive weapon with brown mm -hmm. with the two uh like best like dual running backs um you go with the um what's it called uh baltimore this is mvp right lamar's mm -hmm. mvp so it's like he's uh, supposedly the best player in the nfl and he's got also a good uh running game good receiving core elite defense that they were talking about all year so it's like man everybody has their their weapons but it's only it's the narrative. They want to pick and choose who's their favorite and who they want to win. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, it's amazing because no one was giving us a shot, man. Everyone wanted us to lose. Mm -hmm. And they were all just, like, just bashing Brock Purdy mm -hmm. that, oh, man, that he wasn't going to um, do it for us. And then, so just the best moment of that game was when he took that kneel and then he was pumped up and he gave Shanahan a hug. That was, like, the best moment of the game because it just showed, like, Dude, everything that they went through all year round is with a bashing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Like, all this BS media just pisses me off. And, but that we have two weeks to uh, dissect everything before the big game. We have a lot of videos out there. So get your popcorn ready. Get your popcorn ready, <laughs> baby, because Brock Purdy's going to upset. And it's going to be the story of the decade man what he's about to do i believe it truly believe it but that's what we got man make sure you like this video comment talk to you next time peace, peace.